Hey, thanks for taking the time to listen to this. This is uh, Minutes with God, Street Interviews. God bless. Inside of us called conviction. Uh, what do you think gives us our convictions in life? Because they had this uh, this thing called conviction in their lives at the time, and um, they obviously felt something about God for them to endorse it. I mean, if you read one of the literature letters that uh, Benjamin Franklin wrote, he says God governs in the affairs of man, and then he asks his, he asks his, I think it was Congress or the government at the time. He says, "Have we forgotten our great friend that took us this far?" What do you guys think about that conscience of a, of a person wanting to, to, to know if God is real? Can I get a definition of convictions? <laughs> like, what, is that? Well, what do you think convictions are? I have zero idea. There wasn't really much context. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you, um, do you have, do you, does your heart ever beat for something of, of the truth? Do you ever feel like... Um, like passionate about something yeah, like yeah, that? Passionate, yeah. Yes, of course. Would, are you ever passionate about if there's a life and death, or do you, do, not, do you guys just think you guys will never experience death? No, everyone will experience death, so obviously it's prevalent in our everyday lives, and we should think about others in their lives. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so give me a good reason, um, because there's this great battle on campus between uh, faith and intellect. And so what is a good reason um, not to consider God? Um, for me, I don't because I believe in science. And for me, there's no proof in God. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. And I feel like I, I feel like we should take it with a gentle hand because I feel like a lot of people don't believe in it. And so I feel like we should try to just make everyone happy and everyone healthy while we can in this world. That's what, something to be passionate about, but it doesn't have to do with religion, in my opinion. Yeah, everyone can have their opinions, but it doesn't need to be like forced onto other people. Yeah. <laughs> I have a purpose, it's just not with religion. But if we weren't made for, I mean, what were we created for if, you know, if we... I've thought about this a lot. I think the purpose of life is to just be happy, to make yourself happy. You know, people go on vacation to be happy. People make money so they can go on dates, so they can have fun and be happy. I think everything comes down to happiness. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I feel like you're with yourself at the end of the day, so it's your responsibility to make sure that you're happy because it's your life. Mm -hmm. And you should aim to make other people happy, but... At the end of the day, it's you on you, it. yeah. So there's a quote out there that says that, um, could it be that the atheist can't find God for the same reason a criminal can't find a police officer? Excuse me? <laughs> what do you mean you can't find a police officer? Okay. I could find could, God if I wanted to, but I just don't want to. But if you don't believe in God, you can't find God. There's no interest in God. I don't have any beliefs. I don't know if there is a God. I'm open to the idea. Does that concern you, though? What? Does that concern you if you don't know if there's a God or not? Like, wouldn't, wouldn't, you want, wouldn't you want to know if there's a God? So many different cultures, so many different traditions, and everyone has their God. There's like thousands of gods. How can there be one? Yeah, there's so everything. There's, I know. So there's like open to the idea of it, but for me, there's no proof. So there's no... So you're open to the idea of it, but... So there has to be... You don't think that the world we live in is proof that there is a God? No. I think there's explanation scientifically. Who do you think created those green eyes? My parents' genes. Evolution. Oh, there's a there's a lot of there was a lot of blind people that would want to meet your parents if your parents created those green eyes and those blue eyes. There's a lot of blind people that would appreciate it. Physically do it like right now, like they didn't just do that. It's a long line of evolution that has come to that. So, so do you do you not believe in evolution then? I believe that things evolve. I believe that's the effect of what we were brought into. You see, the Bible shares with us that we were um, that when sin came into the world, it de it it uh, it brought a disease and it brought something that genetically changed us. That's why the Bible says we must be born again. For example, um, it is not natural for a child to grow up with the disease or deformative. That happened because the effect of sin coming into the world, and so so when we under, when we're trying to understand God, we have to say what's the what's the premise of this whole God idea? Does it make sense? And uh, when I read the Bible, there is a beginning and there's an end, mm -hmm. and that makes sense to me because if I'm reading a book, I want to know that there's a first chapter and I want to know that there's a last chapter, and that is going to be the reason that I that I'm governed by. So if I'm reading a book, I want to know that there's a story plot. Wouldn't you guys want to know that there's a story plot to life? I have a question. Yeah, absolutely. Ask me. And I want you guys to ask questions too. Maybe I can help answer. Because maybe this is a God divine appointment. This is the so last question I 
Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to get back to eating, but um, in the case of a child with a deformity, do you think that child deserves to be miserable if their parents were to sin and that was the outcome of it? Like, what's your explanation there? Because that's not fair for the child. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, fair to the child, but the Bible says that the that the wages of sin is death, and a wage is something that we earn. And I'm not saying that a child has earned death, but I'm saying that we invited death into this world by the uh, the sin that uh, we brought into this world, and we continue in this world. It's like uh, if we sin against God, um, if we sin against the the court. So say if I say if I'm a father of four kids and I committed a heinous crime and my actions um, I deserve punishment so I go away to prison but guess who suffers the effect of me going away to prison my kids suffer the effect of it my family suffers the effect of it and that's what sin does when we invite sin in our lives others suffer the effect of of what we've done and that's why God is so serious about the responsibility um, in what we do with our life here and now and if we ignore those responsibilities yeah I would agree that there would be consequences it seems like God's pretty much all-knowing so like why wouldn't why wouldn't he punish you directly? <laughs> yeah. That just doesn't make sense. Right. And he, he does. The wages of sin is death. And we all have a responsibility in our choices. But in our choices, we also have a ripple effect that we give others. So um, it's like if the president makes a wrong decision today, guess what? We're going to feel the consequences tomorrow. And that's why what and who we put our trust is is so important. And if we put our trust in only what we can see, and if we only do that, then we might be making a grave mistake. And so, <laughs> so who do I vote for? Uh, personal, per, personally, I look at the. Uh, uh, personally, I look at the, the the two parties, and I ask myself, um, what has the more values that God would agree with?